So let's start. We are ready to start. I would like to introduce our presenters. We are very lucky today. We have Serena and Nicolacci, Agnese Lecis, Ad Street, Bredon Sani, Caterina Pozzoni, Giulia Toffolo, and Valentina Volpi. So it's more than one presenter. This is a cafe. So we are going to encourage questions throughout the presentation. They are students and they're all in the 20s, taking the Master in Midwifery Sciences at the University of Milano Bicocca. As they say, they find this path quite challenging, but they also find it very rewarding and they're very motivated to explore aspects of midwifery in a deeper way. So that's why they are now interested in researching the internationalization of midwifery and also sharing experiences with other midwifery students all over the world. They participated in a work experience and student exchange program. And what we're going to discuss today, they're going to present us the result of this work experience. They want to learn from other cultures. They're eager to ask and answer questions. And they want to give more visibility to the professional values they learned throughout the working experience. They spent in different European countries and uh, also in Uganda. And I'm passing the microphone to Serena. Good morning. Uh, it's Agnese speaking. Um, so I'm the one with the pink shirts and uh, I'm here with Valentina, the first one uh, from the left, Astrid, the second one, and uh, Serena, that is the one on my left side. We, as Marina said, we are all midwives and now we are attending our first year of um, the Master in Sciences at the University of Milano Bicocca. Uh, one of the stated missions of our university uh, is to teach its students to size the world's opportunity and not to be frightened to confront them and put themselves out there. For this reason, uh, our university offers three programs for uh, internationalization that uh, are written in the slides. So as you can see, there is the Erasmus for studying Erasmus for Trainship and uh, the Exchange Extra One. So uh, the Erasmus is uh, for the European countries. And uh, up to, um, in this moment, we have uh, some agreements with uh, Tallinn in Estonia, Nottingham in the UK, Antwerp in Belgium, Athene in Greece and Ljubljana. And um, uh, speaking about uh, the world, so the exchange uh, so extra European countries, we have Kampala, as Marina said, that is in Uganda, Jerusalem and Istanbul. Uh, all these uh, programs are um, for, uh, for us to go um, abroad and for other students to come to Italy. So um, uh, it's an exchange. And uh, I wanted to, to say that in accordance with the theme of our International Day of uh, Midwives, internationalization, as we will uh, we show you, provides new instruments to be defenders of women's rights. So uh, we shot some interviews uh, to, the stu to some students that uh, had uh, Erasmus and exchange experiences during uh, the bachelor. Um, for the... Um, connection reasons we were not able to show you the video so we um, translated and uh, wrote uh, the um, uh, interviews in some slides and now we are showing you with some pictures and uh, with uh, the text so the first question was uh, what's your name and where have you been so we are now presenting you all our students <coughs> Hi everybody, I'm Valentina and uh, I had a three months uh, traineeship in uh, Tallinn, Estonia uh, at the Healthcare uh, uh, University of Tallinn. Hi, I'm Astrid. I've been in Valencia in Spain for three months. Uh, hi, I'm Sara. I've been in Antwerp uh, in, Bel in Belgium. Hi, I'm Serena and I stay in Italy, uh, in particular in Monza, in the northern. 
Hi, I am Maria Grazia and uh, <coughs> I went uh, to Kampala in Uganda, Africa. So this is Agnese and I've been to Nottingham in the UK. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Anna, I've been in Tallinn, Estonia. And uh, me, it's Silvia, I went uh, to Kampala in Uganda. So the first question was, what prompted you to leave? I, uh, I've always dreamed to take part to uh, the Erasmus program and uh, I have always had uh, a desire to explore new corners uh, of the world, uh, discover new cultures, different traditions, and I was looking for new stimulation which would provide me with smiles. It was a little dream that I have since I was a child. Later, studying midwifery at university and choosing this path in my life, I decided for that reason to go to Africa. Uh, the interest for another culture overall for the place where many of the guidelines that we study are created and also getting in touch with another way of doing midwifery. The will for something new, to meet a new culture and face with something that I had never done. So, uh, I forgot to tell you that um, after uh, every question, we would like to um, uh, discuss with you. So, if you want to write any question or to speak to us, just do it. So now we are moving to the second question uh, that was, uh, how did you get ready? I got ready to live in a very practical way. First of all, taking care of the bureaucracy, filling the documents, getting in touch with my internship coordinator in Valencia, renting my room in Italy and looking for a room in Spain. Asking to the girls that had already done this experience previously to get information about the internship in order to have realistic expectations. I could um, get in touch with some people that had already been in Nottingham or in the UK who explained me how it worked and helped me with the practical stuff. I got ready by finding info about the midwifery assistance in Estonia, how it, how it was organized. I asked some students who had the same experience before and I looked for some information about the city where I was going, not only to assist girls but also to live for three and a half months. To be honest, it was quite a leap in the dark, without much preparation apart from practical things which suits uh, I had to get uh, the passport, where I would sleep. We came from a very stressful uh, internship period here at home, so I didn't really had the time to think about where I would go, would I would meet. It was a sudden departure. So for all of us, um, we had the chance to uh, prepare with all the practical stuff um and also we found that the help uh, of other people that was uh, that were there before uh, helped us a lot so if you don't have any question uh, we just go to the next um how did you adapt once there mm -hmm. I think that to, to adapt the best when you do an experience like this, it is important to feel like a guest in the country you go live in. Always keep in mind that people we get in touch with don't uh, people we get in touch with don't know us and our background, and they often have an idea of normality which is which differs from ours. It was difficult at the beginning. It took a lot of time, a lot in the time. 
The word I used to describe the very first day is panic and another word is chaos. Certainly, uh, it was not easy because it's a different environment, but with the help of other people and with some time, it was possible to adapt. Trying to know the lifestyle of Estonians in Tallinn and going around, wandering in the city and then obviously going to the hospital and the university to see how they were organized. So once more, uh, we saw that the first time is quite hard, uh, but with time and with uh, patience, it was able, it was possible to adapt. And uh, I think it is important to underline what Astrid said, so that we have to feel like guests in the country we go live in. Uh, so Marina asked us uh, if we left uh, your experience abroad immediately after your experience. Yes, yeah, so we did our Erasmus uh, and the experience abroad uh, during the bachelor. Uh, so the three years of university we do here in Italy. And um, it was only uh, clinical practice, so trainship. And so we did it uh, in the second or third year of bachelor. So how did you manage difficult moments? I had the opportunity to think about some issues during the whole experiences. I was lucky to have a classmate who came with me and with whom I was always told about the negative and the positive experiences. Before leaving Italy, a close friend gave me a diary and told me to write the experiences that I would have lived in Essony. It has been very helpful and supportive. trying to see them as opportunities of growth and certainly learning to rely on others, to share my difficulties with the people I met in Valencia, but also learning to trust me and my skills. Talking with other people and sharing also with my classmates who were abroad. How I test them at the beginning, like I will I always do, shutting myself away, then certainly talking about them, talking a lot. So another uh, time we see that uh, it is important for us to talk and to share our experience with uh, other people, friends, classmates, uh, tutors and uh, teachers. Um, and uh, that help us to look the problem in another way and to find the positive in it. Do you have any question as far as now? Okay, so if you want, just write or talk. And now we, we go on. So the next question was what it meant to you to meet another culture. Meeting another, another culture means questioning oneself, questioning the habits, the idea of normality, and learning to appreciate the hosting culture, but also valorizing one's own culture. Living in a foreign country in touch with another culture allows to feel on your own skin what it means to be a foreigner and feeling welcome. You just have to roll with it. I mean, you have to consider the existence of some priorities different from ours. I was in touch not only with the typical Belgian culture, but also with the Jewish culture, because of the presence of a large Jewish community, and with the Turkish and Moroccan ones. The letters are much more lavish and intrusive than the Jewish culture, culture that is very reserved and with different beliefs, like the prohibition of eating right after giving birth thus accepting a different healthcare management. Well, certainly with the hospitals I saw, within the hospitals I saw, many different cultures mix up together. The best part was to realize that how other cultures gradually become part of our society.
This experience enriched me both from personal, emotional and professional standpoint. It definitely was an enriching experience, even though difficult at the beginning. It gave me surely more tools to be able to do my job wherever I go. There was the chance to put myself out there and to second guess me and reconsider all my certainties, especially from the standpoint of the midwifery care, because I have always been involved in the same care model. At the moment when you deal with a cultural background that leads people to have deep different needs, your way of taking care of people necessarily changes. If I have to use the term enrichment, because it really helps you so much, opening your mind in a way that you never could imagine. At the beginning, it has been thought. There are a lot of things that you try to understand, but in the end, you realize that there is nothing to understand. You just need to accept something that is different with respect to what you know and embrace it how it is. So we are now starting to understand the importance of uh, internationalization uh, also for our job. So for us, it was very um, important and enriching to meet other cultures also because um, it is what you will uh, it, was, it will happen uh, in your job. So as Serena said, for example, uh, even in Italy, so even staying here, uh, you meet uh, lots of cult different cultures. So it is important uh, for midwives to, to know how, man how to manage it. So uh, have you noticed differences in midwifery? I noticed a lack of one-to-one -one midwifery care, the impossibility of midwives to stay with women along the whole birth event was the hardest part. Well, in my opinion, there are a lot of differences between Italians and Spanish midwifery care. These differences are especially related to the distinct training undergone by Italian and, Sp and Spanish midwives. Indeed, in Spanish midwives used to study for four years as nurses and only after the degree in nursing they get academic training in midwifery that lasts two more years. Those, their approach, their former mentees is more interventionist. What impressed me most is the rate of women that requests epidural is around 95% in Spain against the 15% in Italy. Certainly, the main difference that I notice is that during the event of birth, women are mainly assisted by gynecologists with minor support from midwives. During the whole care path, since the arrival at the hospital to the second stage of labor, women are assisted by midwives, but for the birth event, but for the birth event gynecologists who took care of the women during pregnancy takes over. There was this difference. I wonder if the midwife takes care of you for, for all, all your all your labor and then you expect to be assisted by the gynecologist. But, but it's because it's the only person that she knew and that took care of her during all pregnancy. I certainly noticed some differences related to the different cultural background, also in terms of uh, relational aspects. The difference is probably related to the distinct healthcare system. Midwives have the chance to devote much more time to women during the outpatients pregnancy and breastfeeding services. There was really a lot of time for each woman. 
thus women tended to be more extroverted and were able to feel welcome in the 45 minutes allocated to them. It makes me laugh. I mean, I had a lot of expectation when I left that have been completely disgraded. It expected a psychological care, whereas I found an extremely medicalized reality. Thus, I had to familiarize myself with that view. I expected women to be free to move within the delivery room in Africa, whereas they were, for example, lying. You know, too medicalized, yes. So, um, as we saw, uh, for many of us, there were some differences in uh, midwifery that were quite uh, shocking. Um, but uh, it was important for us to understand them uh, and to, uh, to know why there were these differences uh, to improve our practice uh or to know what is better if it's better what um what we do here or what they do uh where we have been so we have a question from nora um i think astrid can um, answer um. So the question is, uh, do you notice clinical practice differences between the midwives who trained as nurses first and then completed midwifery? So I think she is talking about uh, what Astrid that was in Spain said, uh, that um, midwives, to be midwives, has, have to, um, do, to be nurses before. Uh, well, in Spain, to become a midwife, you have to uh, go to get a nursing degree. You have to practice for and study for four years as a nurse. So you, uh, the practice of, of the Spanish midwives is more interven interventionist. They are more uh, um, pra practical with the uh, medicine, with drugs, for example and they used to um, uh, su suggest uh, to the women uh, the epidural instead of uh, more natural ways to uh, uh, face the pain for example so yeah i think uh, the main difference is that uh, if you are studying nursing mm -hmm. uh, before doing midwifery you start from a pathological point of view, and uh, um, instead we that, um, start from it with three degrees. Um, we learn to and the philosophy. Uh, we learn to start from uh, physiology and to protect the normality of uh, the birth event. I think it was a bit challenging at the beginning, but uh, really interesting. Uh, the Spanish midwives I met there were really interested in uh, listening to me and learning from our different way to assist women. Uh, I, um, I usually talk um, with them about uh, um, uh, aromatherapy, or a, a digital pressure to induce labor, and they uh, teach me. To, they taught me about uh, more drugs they used uh, in, during the labor of the women to reduce their pain. Uh, we, in Italy, we don't usually use this kind of drugs. Okay. okay. So if you have any question, just um, write and uh, we will answer. 
as going on. Okay, so uh, the next question was, would you recommend this experience? I totally recommend this experience to midwifery students. First of all, it gives you the chance to improve your knowledge for the foreign, of the foreign language or to learn one from scratch. In my case, I learned Spanish. Before going to Spain, I didn't speak a word of Spanish and now I'm quite fluent. The Erasmus project gives you a, a chance to become able to adapt and flexible to different situations and enables you to grow on a personal and professional level. Well, I absolutely recommend this experience. It's not only a traineeship or clinical practice, but also a life-changing experience. You learn to get by on your own and to understand how extensive your knowledge really is. If you have to explain something in another language, you have to focus much more on what you are saying. And this makes you understand what you have to revise. It lets you understand if there is something you need to study better, precisely because you have to explain it in another language. In other words, I believe it's a useful experience. Even though I didn't do my internship abroad, I have the chance to face many different cultures. Thanks to the several foreign women and babies I met training in Italy. They allowed me to learn about the world, not only about my country. I absolutely recommend this experience. From ex uh, experiences like this one, you can learn many life lessons from both a professional and human point of view. Among the strengths of this experience are the knowledge you acquire, the relationship you make and the cultural richness you meet. I know it sounds like a cliche, but knowing about the mentally and of other countries is really a great skill to have. I can see now that I'm back when I take care of foreign women. Now I can understand them much better. I totally recommend this experience. So now we are... Um... Uh, we are saying that we are seeing that uh, this was very positive experience for all of us. We started from a hard moment uh, that we showed before, but um, coming back, all we can say is, it, is that it's a very positive experience and that we recommend it, um, and that we have now um, more instruments uh, for our um, uh, to do our job here. Okay, so uh, do you have any special moments you want to share? I have many great memories from this experience. I remember fondly a woman I had taken care of during the entirety of her labor until the delivery. I met her again alongside her mother, the grandma of the baby, a couple of days later in the hospital, and they were very thankful for my assistance. They told me that I had made the difference in the baby's birth and that I had contributed to ensure that the mother would pressure that important event forever. It struck with me because she was the first woman of whom I had taken care during her, la uh, during her labor in my traineeship in Spain. Even though it was my first week in Spain and I couldn't speak Spanish, I managed to build a good relationship with the woman I was taking care of. I am very fond of this memory. It showed me how important nonverbal communication is in our job. Certainly, one of the last labor I assisted, in which, although there was a language barrier, 
or in any case, I could not express myself in words with that woman. I believe she experienced a very positive childbirth and it was the same for me. There were an harmony despite no words saying. Breastfeeding, because I, I saw this moment as the most natural event in the world, as I re it really should be, and seeing just how naturally and easily these mothers took their baby, even if they were premature, and attached them to the breast without all these problems that, that there were around. It was a beautiful thing. So I have a lot of images of breastfeeding that I really care, carry in my heart. The moments when I felt myself more part of the English community where I was, and when women trust me and it was possible to create a beautiful and positive relationship with them too. I cherish in my heart the last trip in the breastfeeding center when the midwife, who was my traineeship assistant, almost started crying because I had to leave and she told me she was jealous that I would become an Italian midwife and not an Estonian one. She asked, she asked me to come back once I will graduate and told me to go on as I was doing and not to lose a strong passion for midwifery. So as Marina is underlying in the chat, uh, it was um, very important for us to understand that our, um, our job is not only uh, verbal and words, but is beyond language. So even if we were abroad, even if we were not able to speak uh, the language, uh, the native language very well, um, it was possible to create um, very important relationship with women and um, so that they had uh, positive experiences of their childbirth. You know, of course, this uh, happens even if, uh, in our country if we meet uh, women that don't speak our language. So the first, uh, the, the last um, question is to describe uh, our own experience with the slogan. Uh, so they are just um, uh, short um, phrases uh, that, uh, ex yeah, that uh, explain what was more important for us. Live the experience with high head, heart in hand, and smile in pocket. Sino temata la vida, temata la rutina. If life doesn't kill you, routine will do. In my opinion, in our job, but also during life in general, it is important to find new motivations, not to settle on one's own habit, but to always find reasons for personal and professional growth. Prima, which means strength and encouragement that was said to all women during childbirth. Stay in Italy, but with the heart in the world. One word, sister. It was used by everyone, among midwife, both between mom and midwife, and indeed among all women. It is a word that uh, well describes uh, the relationship that uh, it's created in the family community, like a sisterhood, actually. Don't be afraid. Live because it's worth it. Living to change and to know, because when you live, you expect. You have so many expectations and when you arrive, all these expectations may be destroyed and then you have to return to zero, change your way of thinking and seeing things in order to meet a new way. Diversity is a gift. Learn to consider it like this. So that's all. 
Uh, we would like to know if you have any question, if you have any uh, Your experience you want to share with us. Uh, we are uh, learning that in Sydney, Australia, they call each other sister a lot. I think it's it's great because it's really um, showed um, sisterhood and the, um, the strong partnership. Yeah, in the female community. That's fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing the experience. We have um, nine minutes left, so we're perfectly on time. Um, you can ask questions using the microphone or using the chat as we've been doing. And um, I have a brief question because you mentioned language so much. I know in Australia, and we have a participant from Australia, Nora, um, because in Australia you have translation services in the healthcare system, but I don't think that's the case in Italy, is it? Yeah, we uh, it's different from hospitals in each, in uh, every hospital because uh, you know in uh, each city you have ma many different uh, cultures and um, people coming from other countries. So, for example, here in Monza where we are studying, there is um, a great community coming from Bangladesh uh, or from the Arab languages countries. So we have uh, actually a midwife who is speaking um, Arab, uh, French and many other languages that help us if uh, with these women. In, For example, in Milan, there is a great, um, a large uh, Chinese community. So in many hospitals, they have midwives for Chinese uh, that help uh, Italian midwives uh, during the assistance. And these midwives uh, usually are not just translators, but cultural mediators. So they help out not only with the language, but with the culture of these uh, people, of, the, of these women. Fantastic. So the, the midwife is the cultural bridge and doing the translation yeah. as well. <laughs> Excellent. Mm. We still have uh, a few more minutes. Would you like to expand on any points that you've shared already? I'm I'm curious about so many things that you said, but I, I want to encourage questions from the participants mm -hmm. in the chat. I'm curious to hear also more from Maria Grazia. You compared breastfeeding in, in, um, in you, you said you were surprised, pleasantly surprised, very happy, surprised about breastfeeding in, in Uganda. And uh, why did you, uh, which could you give an example of the differences that you find with Italy? Could you compare them a bit more? So, uh, Maragras is not here with us, but uh, mm -hmm. she was saying that um, in uh, Uganda, where she was, um, it was very natural for the women to breastfeed. So, uh, they didn't even um, consider other possibilities if uh, they were able to breastfeed even premature babies or babies that were sick or even if they were not um, very well uh, um, talking about health uh, so uh, it is different from other uh, from our culture because uh, sometimes we see um, some problems that may be um, that that may uh, be there uh, that may um, interrupt breastfeeding and uh, but in uh, Uganda it was uh, all more natural so um, they, they were very happy to breastfeed and uh, they it was their only chance so I, I want to thank you for speaking also for Maria Grazia and I think you found a great way to present um, such a vast uh, 
such a variety of experiences because uh, staying in Italy, going abroad, in the end you you connected everything and uh, and uh, presented it in a beautiful way. How it was uh, so interconnected. Uh, so just to um, uh, make a conclusion, uh, we are very happy to that we had the possibility to do this experience abroad and uh, talking again about the theme of our International Day of Midwives, that is uh, to defend the women, women's rights. Um, I think these experiences gave us um, lots of new instruments to, to do this, so to um, defend our women's rights and during all our clinical practice. Thank you. Thank you so much.